without masks, it does feel uncomfortable. I do think that in a lot of ways, a mask for me and for my husband and my kids feels a little bit like a like a security blanket. You know, it has been this thing that we have gotten so used to wearing and it, it feels normal and it feels reassuring. So even though they're all fully vaccinated and healthy too, they'll keep masking around other people to protect themselves and others from COVID and long COVID. I know many people, as we all probably do at this point, who have had COVID and even seeing what kind of the severe end of mild looks like is definitely not something I want for myself or my family. So they're still not eating inside restaurants, going to the gym or movies either, still only socializing and doing play dates outside. Same goes for Amy Klager. She's 45 and lives outside St. Paul, Minnesota. And it's not always easy, especially for her three kids who are fully vaccinated. In our neighborhood, we've been the most paranoid. The kids have noted their friends say that your parents are paranoid and, and crazy and why are they making you do this? But the girls still wear masks, even though they are getting peer pressure. Public health experts say it's not surprising different people are reacting very differently at this moment. Monica Shaksbana is a medical anthropologist at Johns Hopkins. We're going to have both, for some, a sense of liberation, for others, a really sense of even deeper endangerment, and in the middle, a lot of confusion. And some people are feeling pressure to do things they may not feel comfortable doing. Eating inside restaurants because friends are tired huddling around propane heaters and fire pits, trudging back to the office before they're ready, feeling like the oddball being the only one still masked up. You can feel alone, the only one wearing a mask in the room, and also feeling in danger at the same time. And that's, that's a very scary place to be. Ezekiel Contreras is 24 and lives in San Diego. He's lost touch with friends who've gone back to the gym maskless, and he's worried about showing up for job interviews wearing his mask. I'm worried that that's going to be a problem, like they're going to want me to take the mask off or something. <laughs> but uh, I think I would just refuse to take the mask off. In the end, each individual has to become kind of an amateur epidemiologist, calculating how much risk they're willing to take over and over again every day in each situation. There's no bright line that separates safe and not safe. Dr. Robert Wachter at the University of California, San Francisco says it depends on where you live, your age, health, and what for you is worth taking a risk and what isn't. We've got to be sort of forgiving of ourselves and our, our neighbors. You know, our brains have all been pickled in anxiety for two years. You can't snap your fingers and say, you know, don't worry about it at all in part because it's hard for the brain to make that kind of a pivot, and in part because the risk is not zero, it's just low. For his part, Wachter is still masking up most of the time, but he's also resumed doing some things he did before the pandemic because he knows COVID isn't going away, and this could be as good as it gets for a very long time. If you're waiting to, for example, eat indoors until the risk of COVID is zero, you may be waiting forever. And that, you know, that may be where you live. It may be you're risk averse enough to say, I'm okay living that way. But if you don't want to live that way, this is a time where I think you should be dipping your toe in the water and getting used to accepting a tiny bit of risk in order to have the trade-offs of living life a little bit more normally. Some people, like Michelle Foreman in Maryland, are just starting to dip their toes. We are slowly wading back into a lot of those things, but I think taking our mask off indoors in public, aside from like a doctor's office, is probably, you know, I think it's gonna be a while. And others are still totally hunkering down, afraid to catch Omicron and worried that yet another dangerous new variant may be lurking out there. Rob Stein, NPR News. This is NPR News. You're listening to the Publix Radio, 89.3 FM. A Wednesday, March 9th. A news update coming up next. And then a closer look at the guilty verdict in the January 6th riot trial. The first trial coming from the events of that day. 
programming on the public's radio is made possible in part thanks to local businesses who, like you, believe in the power and value of nonprofit local journalism. Learn how your business can join it and reach an informed, engaged audience at thepublicsradio.org slash underwriting. It's 8.30. Now that it's... Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Dave Mattingly. Ukraine's president is applauding President Biden for banning U.S. imports of Russian crude oil. It's the latest sanction announced by the U.S. in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Here's NPR's Lauren Freyer. In another middle-of-the-night speech, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked the U.S. for banning Russian oil imports. Calling an important step to weaken the invaders. Meanwhile, Russian bombardment intensified overnight in many areas. Residents of the capital, Kyiv, woke up to air raid sirens. After days of promised humanitarian corridors breaking down, some civilians have successfully been evacuated from Sumy near the Russian border, and officials there tell NPR that process continues today. But a humanitarian crisis is deepening elsewhere. The southern port city of Mariupol is surrounded by Russian forces. Videos from there show bodies in the street, shops looted, and residents melting snow for water. Lauren Freyer, NPR News in Lviv Oblast, Ukraine. AAA says gasoline prices in the U.S. hit another record high today. Regular now averages $4.25 a gallon. That's a jump of 60 cents over the past week. In California, AAA says regular averages more than $5.50 a gallon. Energy analysts say it'll be this way for the foreseeable future. This is NPR News. This is the Publix Radio. Good morning, I'm Chuck Henry in Providence. A police investigation is underway in Warwick. The local news reports say a body was found in a wooded area of that city late yesterday afternoon. That body found near TF Green International Airport. According to police, the body was in an advanced state of decomposition, having possibly been there for a while. No word on any identification or even whether the person was male or female. The Rhode Island Medical Examiner's Office will conduct an autopsy, and Warwick police are asking for anyone with information about this to contact them. A Burrowville man who was to be released under strict conditions while facing federal weapons charges instead will remain in federal custody. Channel 12 News reporting that a federal magistrate yesterday ordered 37-year-old Ronald Andrichuk to remain in custody while new evidence in his case is being reviewed. That new evidence was not revealed. Authorities say they found more than 200 weapons on Andrichuk's property after neighbors complained about gunshots. Another hearing in this case is planned for tomorrow. In sports, college basketball, a big win at home last night for the Bryant men. They beat Wagner in the Northeast Conference Championship 70-43. to This is historic for Bryant, coming with an automatic bid to this year's NCAA tournament, a first for Bryant. There was a, before a sold-out crowd in Smithfield last night, and it got a little tense at the end of the game, uh, delayed for a while after a fight broke out among fans in the stands. Providence Bruins on the road yesterday beat the Toronto Marlies at 3-1. Cloudy with snow developing and a high in the upper 30s today. We could see an accumulation of uh, coating to a few inches possible. Snow ending tonight becoming partly cloudy overnight low in the upper 20s. Tomorrow mostly sunny, a high around 50. Friday mostly sunny, high near 50. 36 degrees now in Providence, in Newport, and in Fall River. 35 degrees in New Bedford and Westerly. This is the Publix Radio. Support for NPR comes from this station and from Clavio, working to help brands deliver personalized email and SMS campaigns that drive revenue and create genuine customer relationships at klaviyo.com slash npr.
and from indeed a 